Hi everyone, welcome to our video lecture for section 11.3 on Taylor series. In the preceding section, we saw that a power series represents a function on its interval of convergence. This section will be exploring the opposite question, given a function, what is its power series representation? Now we have already made significant progress in answering these questions because we know that we can use Taylor polynomials to approximate functions. The only thing that we're going to be doing differently here is to extend Taylor polynomials to produce power series, which are going to be called power series. And here's the definition. Suppose that the function f has derivatives for all orders on the interval centered at a point a. So the Taylor series for f centered at a is, well, it is a typical formula for a Taylor polynomial, except that this time around, we're not stopping at n, we're going all the way to infinity. If the Taylor series is not zero, then we're talking about a Maclaurin series. Now, a couple of things that I would like to point out here. For the Taylor series to be useful, we need to know two things, the values of x for which the Taylor series converges and the values of x for which the Taylor series for f equals to f. Now, the first part here, the first question, the values for x for which the Taylor series converges, we've already done. We've already figured out, okay, well, what is the interval of convergence for a given series? The second question though here, so for what values of x does the Taylor series equals to f? Well, that one here is a little bit more subtle and we'll discuss it a little bit later down the video. Alrighty, now let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples here. And as I mentioned in class as well, section 11.3 is really just gonna be an extension of what we've been doing with sections 11.1 .1 and 11.2. For example, take a look at this problem. We're trying to find out the Maclaurin series for the function f of x equals to one over one minus x and then find the interval of convergence. So in essence, we're just gonna be finding the Taylor polynomial, extending it to infinity, and then we figure out, okay, well, what is the interval of convergence? So let's take a look. If we're given the function f of x, and we are looking for its Taylor series representation, or in this case, a Maclaurin series. So if it's a Maclaurin series, we know that we're centering it at zero. Okay, so we are gonna be evaluating the function at zero and its respective derivatives. So for this one here, I'm thinking then I'll go all the way to the fourth derivative to make sure that I can establish a pattern with the series. So the first derivative here we're gonna get, well, I guess before I do, I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite this function here as one minus x raised to the negative one, because I don't wanna use the quotient rule. I would much rather use a chain rule for this one. So the first derivative is gonna be equals to negative one times one minus x raised to the negative two raised to the negative one. Now at this point here, I'm gonna make this one a little bit wider, there we go. Okay, now make this a little bit smaller so I can save some room. Okay, there we go. So our first derivative is gonna be equals to negative and a negative, that's a positive. So we're gonna get a one over one minus x squared. All right, so second derivative, we're gonna get two times one minus x to the negative three raised, well, <laughs> times a negative one. And again, I got a positive two because bring the exponent down and there we go. Now this one here is gonna give us a two over one minus x cubed. All right, so now let's go ahead and get the third derivative. And that's gonna give us here a two times a negative three times one minus x to the negative four times a negative one, which is gonna give us, now for this one here, it's gonna give us a six, but since I'm seeing here that it looks like I'm multiplying the two times three, but then for the next derivative, I would then have to bring down the four, I do see a pattern there, which hopefully is gonna become clear in the next derivative. So right now we have a two times a three, the negative and the negative, I already turned it into a positive here. And this one here is going to be divided by a one minus x to the fourth. All right, now the last derivative here, so the fourth derivative of x, sorry, the fourth derivative of the function is gonna give us a two times three times negative four times one minus x to the negative fifth, times a negative one, which will give us here. Now at this point, notice we have a two times three times four. Well, this one here is just basically a four factorial. And in this problem here, it was just a three factorial. All right, so we're gonna have a four factorial divided by a one minus x to the fifth. Okay, now might as well write the numerator, the numerator for the second derivative here as two factorial, because that's what it was. This one here was one factorial. Okay, so now that we figure out the derivatives, remember we still need to evaluate all of these derivatives at a equals to zero. So evaluating it at a equals to zero, let's see what we're gonna get. Just put a line here. 
and we're going to be getting for the first value f of 0 is just 1 f prime at 0 well it was just also a 1 f double prime at 0 is going to be a 2 factorial or again this one here technically was a 1 factorial this one here is just a 3 factorial and the last the fourth derivative that we did is just a 4 factorial okay so now let's see what would be the Taylor polynomial only with four terms and if we expand it, what will be the series? Well, might as well just expand it here. So we're going to have the Taylor series for 1 over 1 minus x is going to be 1 plus 1x one plus 2 factorial x squared over 2 factorial plus 3 factorial times x cubed divided by 3 factorial plus 4 factorial divided by 4 factorial times x to the fourth and we would have kept on going. So you notice here that there does seem to be a pattern. Now for starters, the factorials are canceling out here. So it seems like this 1 over x is giving us the following Taylor series. 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth and so forth. So what would be the Taylor series representation for this one? Well, it's simply going to be the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity for x to the n. And there we go, we're done. Now notice here that this one, it seems like it is representing a geometric series. Or, we can also call it the Taylor series for 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, now this problem was also asking us to find out, okay, what is the interval of convergence? So let's figure out the interval of convergence. Now as we were doing last class, to find the interval of convergence, all that we need to do is just a ratio test. So we'll take the limit as n approaches infinity for the a sub n plus 1, so x raised to the n plus 1 over x to the n, absolute value. And this one here is going to be simply x times x to the n over x to the n, absolute value, which is just going to give us the absolute value of x. And since we want it to converge, we just set it here to be less than 1. Okay, so this gives us here the radius of convergence, and again, Visually, what's going on here is we have our series centered at zero, and we're allowed to go a distance of one, that's the r, to the right, and one to the left. Now we still need to be careful though, because we don't know what is happening at the endpoints. So what is happening here at x equals to one and at x equals to negative one? So let's test the endpoints. So let's go ahead and test the x equals to negative one. Alrighty, so if we have the series as, as, go, as n goes from 0 to infinity for negative 1 raised to the n, well, this one here is a diverging geometric series since we see here that the absolute value for r is 1. So that doesn't work. What about the other endpoint? So let's go ahead and test the x equals to 1. Okay, so now we have the series as n goes from 0 to infinity for 1 to the n, which is also a diverging ge geometric series since r, the absolute value of r, is equals to 1. So, same thing here. Alrighty, so for the inter interval of convergence then, we are going to have the interval from negative 1 to 1 where the endpoints are not included. And there we go. Okay, now let's take a look at another example which is going to be very similar but with a very important difference. So now we want to see if we can go ahead and find the Taylor series for f of x equals to 1 over 1 minus x, but this time around we are centering our at 5. Now, what is the difference for this problem? Well, when we did the Taylor series here, or to be more specific, the Maclaurin series centered at 0, notice here that we're getting an interval of convergence that's only going from negative 1 to 1. So it means that our power series is only applicable, or it only matches the function for the most part, in this interval. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and show it here on Desmos. Okay, so this gives us here the radius of convergence. And again, visually what's going on here is we have our series centered at zero and we're allowed to go a distance of one, that's the r, to the right and one to the left. Now we still need to be careful though because we don't know what is happening at the endpoints. So what is happening here at x equals to 1 and at x equals to negative 1? So let's test the endpoints. So let's go ahead and test the x equals to negative 1. 
Alrighty, so if we have the series as as go as n goes from zero to infinity for negative one raised to the n, well, this one here is a diverging geometric series since we see here that the absolute value for r is one. So that doesn't work. What about the other endpoint? So let's go ahead and test the x equals to one. Okay, so now we have the series as n goes from zero to infinity for one to the n, which is also a diverging ge geometric series since r, the absolute value of r, is equals to one. So, same thing here. Alrighty, so for the inter interval of convergence then, we are going to have the interval from negative one to one where the endpoints are not included. And there we go. Okay, now let's take a look at another example which is gonna be very similar but with a very important difference. So now we wanna see if we can go ahead and find the Taylor series for f of x equals to one over one minus x, but this time around we are centering our at five. Now, what is the difference for this problem? Well, when we did the Taylor series here, or to be more specific, the Maclaurin series centered at zero, notice here that we're getting an interval of convergence that's only going from negative one to one. So it means that our power series is only applicable or it only matches the function for the most part in this interval. And in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and show it here on Desmos. Okay, so here we have in red, our function one over one minus x, and here is our power series representation in green. Now this one here, I'm picking the end value is to, to be just one. But now let's see if we go ahead and increase it. Then, okay, it seems like it's starting to match the function much nicely. However, this is only happening on the interval from negative one to one, where again, they're not included. They're kind of behaving like horse, uh, vertical asymptotes if you want to think about it that way. So yes, I increased the number of terms. Yeah, you get to see here that you are pretty much matching the function here in this part. But what about the rest of the function here? Because now we don't know what, what would be going on here at let's say an x value of four, five, six. So if you wanted to figure out, okay, what would be the power series representation for the function at some other point? Well, we will need to repeat the process, but this time around choose a different center. And that's what we're gonna be doing in the next problem. So let's go back. All right, so now we wanna find the Taylor series for f of x equals to one over one minus x, center at five. Now, lucky for us, we already figured out all the derivatives, so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy them from our previous problem. So let's see, what would we get here? Let's take a look. There we go. Now we just need to go ahead and evaluate this one's here at a equals to five, or x equals to five. All righty, so let's see what we're gonna get. Now this one here, guys, I'm just gonna go ahead and all right, so this is what I got here. So as you expect, the coefficients are a little bit different because this time around in the denominator, we have one minus five. Now, because one minus five will give us a negative four and we're gonna have a negative in our answer. Now for the next ones here, on the, for example, the next one where we have one over one minus five, technically this is still a negative four, but because we're squaring it, it became a positive. And that's where we have a, have a four squared here. The next one's gonna be a cubic. So that means that it's an odd power. The negative is gonna come back. Fourth power, whoops, this one, oops. There we go, the fourth power doesn't have any negatives. And the fifth power, lastly, the negative returns. Okay, so now that we have our coefficients, let's go ahead and take a look at how would a Taylor series would look like. All right, so we're gonna have here one over one minus x is gonna be equals to now I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in my coefficients and let's see what we get. Okay, so I got the following and just as before, notice that a couple of things will cancel. I see a two factorial on the third term, canceling the two factorial here, then the three factorial cancels this three factorial, this four factorial cancel this four factorial. So once it's simplified, we're gonna get this nice series. Okay, now at this point, I'm gonna ask you to pause the video and see if you can come up with this power series in summation notation as n goes from zero to infinity. So think about the terms that we have here. For starters, I notice that it's alternating, so it's gonna have a particular factor, but what about the rest? So pause the video here, think about it, and then when we meet back, we can compare our answers. Welcome back. This is the answer that I got. The series as n goes from zero to infinity for a negative one raised to the n plus one times x minus five raised to the n over four raised to the n plus one. Alrighty, hopefully you guys got the same thing.
But now we're going to figure out the radius of convergence. So we can figure out later the interval of convergence. So to figure out the radius of convergence, I'm just going to go ahead and, well, use our trusty ratio test. So using the ratio test, we'll take the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. Now this one here, I'm going to go ahead and skip a couple of steps, and I'm just going to go ahead and add 1 directly here, but I'll do it in this particular way. Our original series was negative 1 raised to the n plus 1, and now I'm adding a 1 here. Then we have an x minus 5 raised to the n. Now I'm adding a 1 over the 4 raised to the n plus 1. And now we add a 1 here. Now I'm multiplying it times the reciprocal of the denominator. So now we're going to have here a 4 raised to the n plus 1 over negative 1 raised to the n plus 1. Close the absolute value. All right, so what can we cancel here? Well, oops, well, I, was, I missed one more important detail here. We still had the x minus 5 raised to the n on the bottom. Very important here. Alrighty, now we can cancel. And I'm going to go ahead and cancel the x minus 5 raised to the n with this one here, but keep, keep in mind that we have one of them remaining. Now the 4 raised to the n plus 1 is going to cancel the 4 raised to the n plus 1 here, but again, we still have one remaining. The negative 1 raised to the n plus 1 is going to cancel this one here on the bottom, but we still have one remaining. So this is going to give us then the limit as n approaches infinity for, let's see what was remaining. Well, we still had a negative 1 raised to the 1 times the next one is 5 raised to the 1 divided by a 4 raised to the 1. Okay, close the absolute value here. Now, I'm going to continue it on this line or on the next line. So we're going to have the limit as n approaches infinity. But notice here, guys, are, are we still left with any n's? No, they're all gone. So we basically just have the limit as n approaches infinity for the absolute value of negative 1, so that's just a 1, but basically the absolute value of x minus 5 over 4. And so there's no, since there's no s here, might as well get rid of the limit. And this one here has to be less than 1. So we're going to have here then the absolute value of x minus 5 is less than a 4. And there we go. Here we have our radius of convergence. So visually, what we have here is the number line. And we have our power series centered at 5 with a radius of convergence of 4. So we can move 4 to the right, 4 to the left. And it looks like our endpoints are a 1 and a 9. Okay. Now, for this one here, guys, I'm just going to mention them. The interval of convergence, if you actually test the endpoints, they are both diverging. So this one here diverges, this one here diverges. Now, since we already tested them in the previous example, I'll let you test them here. But for this problem, I'll just mention here that the interval of convergence is the interval from 1 to 9, where the endpoints are not included. So let's take a look here. Is this the correct power series representation for 1 over 1 minus x centered at x equals to 5? Well, let's see. Okay, so once more, we haven't read our function 1 over 1 minus x, and in green are power series approximations. Now, let me go ahead and change the power series approximation centered at 0. I'll put this one here in orange. Now, let's see here. In green, we have our power series representation for 1 over 1 minus x, but this time around, centered at 5. Now let's see what happens here as I increase my number of terms. So as I increase my number of terms, we get to see here that yes, near x equals to 5, our power series approximation is pretty much the same function. However, we're always keeping in mind where we have our interval of convergence. Because we said here before that if we were centering at power series at 5, then the interval of convergence was between 1 and 9. And that's what we're seeing here between 1 and 9. Yes, the function seems to, or the power series seems to match the function, but anything past the 9 here, yeah, it's not really working. All right, so as you see, the wherever you're centering your power series is very important. You're going to have different intervals of convergence. Okay, now with that said, this is the last topic that we're going to be covering in this first part of the video. In part two of this video, we're going to be talking about the convergence of a Taylor series, which will answer the question. Does the series for a function convert 
to the function. All right, so I'll see you there. Have a good one.